Yeah. Okay, we're recording now. Thank you, Ruben. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to where we were last time. Um, did we finish responsibilities or did we have more to add to this? Sorry, I'm just reading to like remind myself. It's okay. I feel like it's been forever since I looked at this document. I was gonna yeah. say, I looked at it, but I wasn't at the last meeting, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm skimming through it again just to see. Essentially, yeah. I mean, I know, I don't know. I think we did sustaining clear communication, establishing consistent. It'd be weird if we had left off halfway through it. <laughs> so I think that we probably did, but I do think we will read through this one more time before we put it out to the vote, just so that we have one, like we know it's cohesive, what? cohesive and two, that it's related well to the um, board of directors bylaws too. That was something we had talked about as well. Um, I did look at the board of directors bylaws before we before the meeting just to check and see like is there anything on here that we should maybe move on to the officers just because the way we're doing officers is a little bit different than the way that um the template is set up and i think the things that we might want to add that aren't on the template are like meetings and meeting requirements and then um committees i think we also talked about giving the officers the ability to not only create committees, but also cha I think chair, I don't know if chair is the right word, but lead committees. Um, and then also I was wondering if we would need to put, if we put something down about meetings for the officers, we should probably put something down about waiver of notice as well, just like we did for the board. Um, but I don't know, is there anything else that anyone's thought of that we could add? And you don't have to answer now, you can also like think about it as we go. I had to um, piece out right on time last time. And what makes me think that maybe we didn't finish all of the uh, last part is the last sentence just doesn't have a period on it or anything. It's just kind of like promoting guild activities and membership benefits. Did we want to clarify that at all or in some way? Sorry for I think I think it's good to keep activities vague because <laughs> we, <laughs> you know, we don't know. Um, but I think membership benefits will, I think membership has a section called benefits. And if it doesn't, we can always put one in and then, you know, whoever that the would lawyer be, is can yell at just us. Just making sure that that <laughs> matches up somewhere else and then benefits would be capitalized. Yes. Very right, cool. I'm going to make a note of that as well. Because we are, we do put like really heavy emphasis on being mutually um, beneficial. So I do think that um, term benefits is really a good idea. Okay, so I guess let's get started. Let's go back to this just to reread it. I'm gonna kind of try and summarize and please feel free to like pop in with anything that I'm missing. Oh, you're all right, bud. Oh, no. Anyway, um, so we started with what the officers were. We came up with the term zone representative instead of, instead of, um, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we came up with zone representative instead of regional representative because we decided we would actually section it out by time zone so that we can easily accommodate for becoming international. Um, and also it's a logistical decision instead of a like demographic decision, which works a little bit better. Um, there will be, we did a bunch of like fun <laughs> legal math language. So that was great. Um, 
So essentially what it breaks down to is if a zone has between seven and 10 members, they get one zone representative. If they go um, above 10, they will get two zone representatives, et cetera, et cetera. So that's laid out there in a word problem. Um, and then this process is gonna continue for each 10 members, et cetera. Each zone representative position is unique and can only be filled by one individual. Um, that individual cannot have any other role within this organization other than member. So everybody is technically a member, but they can't be like on the board at the same time. They also can't be on the election committee at the same time. And we will have to like stipulate that. Um, and of course they can't act in more than one capacity. So they can't say, well, I'll just double as, you know, a member and a zone. No, you gotta be a zone representative or a member. Um, election and terms, there'll be one meeting each year um, where the election committee, actually, I guess we should say every two years since they are on the two year cycle. Um, the election committee shall organize a vote, which is open to all membership, electing zone representatives. This talks a little bit about how they're elected. Um, we do need to put in a section about impeachment. I did forget about that. And they will serve for two years, similar to the board members. So we'll have basically the same leadership for two years. Um, and we did specific legalese on when that happens. If they pass away, resign, retire, are impeached or disqualified, um, then I think what we do is terminate their office, basically. Um, election committee has the special responsibility to hold, they can hold a special election. I don't know if that needs to be capitalized or not because that might end up in their section. So I'm just gonna go ahead and capitalize it because they can also do that for, um, what are they called? Board members. <laughs> um, and then vacancies, the term of office, um, shall terminate whenever there is a vacancy or upon the death. Um, they'll be filled through special election processes. This part's a little bit redundant, but this lays out a little bit more about special elections. So I thought maybe we should keep it in. Um, Cause I'm not sure what legal counsel will suggest is better. And so they might tell us, no, it's better to have it kind of fleshed out as like what happens in case of vacancies. Um, and then they'll just serve for the rest of that term. Any officer or assistant officer can also be removed by the membership on, upon such terms as laid out in the election committee section of these articles. So again, the special election and impeachment will be laid out in those areas. Um, the election committee will handle all of that. Yeah. Um, so responsibilities is where we stop. Basically, this is just like, it's exactly like we copy pasted and then edited the general powers of the board. Because in this section for the example, they start talking about what each role does. Um, did I scroll past it? Oh no, I'm just not there. So they start talking about like chair, vice chair, et cetera, et cetera. All of our um, officers are at an equal level, so it doesn't make sense to do that. So instead we went into general powers um, the board is responsible for overall policy and direction of the guild and delegates responsibility for day-to-day -day operations to the zone representatives. So essentially zone representatives are dealing with the day-to-day -day upkeep of things like the Instagram, um, YouTube, et cetera, mailing list, all of that kind of stuff, the newsletter. Um, they will be upholding the mission, goals, and objectives of the guild created by the membership alongside the zone representatives. I think actually, oh, we're in the board of director bylaws. Haha, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> um, it's the same here. Specific powers of the zone of representatives include, again, upholding the mission, goals, and objectives of the guild, but this time with the board, proposing fellow representative or board member removals, um, support 
raising the financial resources, so fundraising. Um, but the clear distinction here is they can help fundraising, um, but they cannot make decisions about money without the board input. So um, contributing to a biennial review of the guild's performance of goals. Um, so essentially when they come into office, they'll be doing that if that's what works best. Taking on leadership positions within teams. So that's how we started talking. We're gonna to have to put a section in here that's not committees, but is teams. Or we'll have to put in both, I'm not sure. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. what, what is the difference? I mean, I guess this is, will have to be defined in the bylaws, but um, since I wasn't here last time, what is the difference in thinking between teams and committees? Yeah, so we're going to, I guess I'll go to the committee section here because it's good to have like a visual. Um, so committees are essentially going to include things like the executive committee. They will have and they exercise powers as, you know what, what will do the legally? Their committees are more, um, how do you say it, like removed? where they're like, we're creating a committee to organize a like large event. So let's say a conference, there would be a conference committee. A team is like the Instagram team. So they're doing day-to-day -day volunteering. Um, and we got to kind of lay that out and talk about how officers will interact with each. So teams are going to be more of, you know, general volunteers. Um, they won't be special like task assigned. They will just be regular maintenance. Um, and they might be smaller teams, they might be larger teams. And we might end up with like a website team or we might end up getting more broad with um, what we describe as teams in the future. Like maybe we just have a social media team and they do, that would encompass design, Instagram and the website because all of those things would be up and running at that point and would only need maintenance essentially. So that might be a little bit easier at that point. Um, and then I don't know if YouTube would fall into that category as well. So that's something we'll have to kind of think about, but I'm a little bit getting ahead of myself. Did that answer your question? Yeah, no, that makes more sense because one of the that kind of goes along with another question I had when I was looking at the responsibilities for the officers um, or zone representatives is that because they're not traditional, my big question was, well, who is going to be in charge of the finances? Because normally the treasurer, that's a big part. And the only reason I'm, I would be worried is if it's not specific, specifically laid out, like no one's going to do it. Like, you know, take, keep track of the budget, maintain the budget, as well as, you know, being responsible for filing the the taxes and if we do get money like issuing debit cards bank accounts all that good stuff so do you see that being more of a team job then i think that would be more of the board that is responsible for that instead because they are the ones who are making those decisions with the finances um and we've kind of laid it out so that they're the only ones who really interact with money um so they are in charge of reviewing and approving the guild's budget they are in charge of um, fundraising as well, but also ensuring adherence to federal law. So that would fall under the category of doing the taxes, um, which is like the main thing you have to do in North Carolina. And then, sorry. Okay, <laughs> I, I just wasn't sure thought. if that was specific enough. Um, but I guess it does, it could be pretty, can say, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Typically stuff like um, the PayPal, uh, like a PayPal account or um, issuing a gift card or holding a debit card is considered part of the day-to-day -day activities. And it's typically done by um, a staff member versus a board member. So it would be like the executive director, whoever that is, um, the board like a lot's the incidentals fund and then the person who actually has the debit card um 
then has you know just like a set amount via the board's um, budgeting. Yeah, and we could say something to that effect. We could also put that in like a special. Um, we could also put that in like one of the miscellaneous provisions as well, so that we do have a staff member in charge of that. I think our primary concept right now is that most of the financial decisions will be made by the board, but I don't think that closes the um, possibility that we could either have a staff member or an officer do some of those kinds of things. The only thing I'm kind of curious about is whether or not we would be doing some of those things. So like sending out that kind of money, um, creating gift cards, creating things like that. Does that make sense? Um, I'm not saying we wouldn't. I'm just wondering when we would. Well, and my thought is like as soon as, not as soon as, but you know, we're collecting membership dues and the thought is eventually if there's a conference, right? Somebody needs to hold a card to pay for, you know, whatever is gonna be covered by the conference. Um, as well as, I mean, if we're doing any sort of compensation for jurors or what have you, you know, perhaps it is in the form of a gift card or an actual check. Um, so, yeah, I mean, my thing is like, I don't want the board to necessarily be in control of all the money, like how the money, I mean, I don't know. Do we want the board to be in control of all of the money? Like who gets to use it, right? Who gets to deci decide exactly? Cause my thought was the zone representatives would also be responsible for determining like, you know, um, if so, some something in their zone needs money or something like that. I mean, they'd have to get approval, but they would get the ability to spend it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think the board could um, be involved with disseminating the funding. Like maybe the zone reps are like, this is what my area, this is what my zone needs funding for. Or, you know, this is maybe like collectively what the guild is, what we see the guild as needing funding for. And then going to the board, then the board looks at all the money they can approve it, you know, they can be like, yes, we have the funding for that, or no, we don't have the funding for that right now, but now we know what strategies we need to take on. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is just deciding, like, do we want to have um, financial decisions essentially tied to one person, or do we want to have, like, essentially the board have the ability to spend money through like PayPal or something. And then if we do that, you know, that kind of does make it easier for them to disseminate money to the zone representatives, especially if, if we are international. Um, but the problem with that is how do you claim that on your taxes? Like that technically is money being paid to an individual. Do we need to get reimbursal receipts? How do we hold on to those, you know? So I think this is going to become more of a question The the logistics of it will become more of a question for like an accountant or um, maybe a lawyer. I don't think the lawyer would really be able to help with that as much, but we can put it down in the responsibilities as like day-to-day -day transactions, but there is a part of me that gets a little bit uncomfortable with that idea because it is decentralizing financial decisions and that does come with a lot of like complications well um, what if it's the type of thing where the board are the final the board members are the final purchasers like they're the only ones with the bank account information but they like provide the numbers like i'm thinking like ani remember like when i would be like okay to all the faculty like when you're teaching at kca i like remember when i would go to all the faculty and be like okay here's your budget you know tell me what you need i'll purchase it for you Right. You know, like maybe it could be something like that. A responsibility that says like, you know, they are responsible for perhaps like, right. And just like writing something down essentially to be submitted for approval. Yeah. Um, and I think it's good to delineate that so that they do know that they can advocate on behalf of their zone. Right. Um, and it kind of does take the burden off of the board of directors and that they have to know exactly what every zone, you know, 
if it, we are really spread out, like what exactly every zone is going to need and where to allocate the money, it's kind of helpful to have that second dairy kind of person talking about that. Yeah, I think it could be worded as like um, quarterly or every three months or every month they have a proposal. We could have like a form or something that they fill out. Like it can just be like exactly what you're saying, Ani. Like they need to write something down. We need to have it in writing. Yeah, and like we can have we can create in Google Sheets, you know, a spreadsheet that lists out for full transparency all the budget, you know, all the numbers that sort of exist like as they are in that moment, and then like all like a record of all transactions that occur as well. This is all familiar language to me because this is exactly what I do at KCA. This is like my role there as a shop technician. So this is like very familiar. Yeah, essentially it's like purchase orders, right? And we, yeah. instead of just like, we'll have to make them itemize things because I do think that's a good idea too because once it is written, it is much easier for us to share publicly and to maintain like a public um, roster of those kinds of expenses where it's like, okay, maybe a member decides, I have like a problem with the fact that the, I don't know what time zone Germany is in, but like the German time zone is getting way more funding than the um, Japanese time zone. <laughs> and that feels weird to me because we have the same number of members. So um, that I think would be a little bit that would be a good way to keep that kind of accountability and say, okay, the programming in that area is going to need some kind of a boost because they're not getting the same kind of, you know. Um, and it could be, we could also say, well, the reason that Germany is getting that is because we're having the digital conference in Germany. Like they are the ones who are hosting it this time. So that would be like, they are the people who are purchasing, you know, um, CC services and microphones, and that might be what ends up happening, you know, if it's a digital situation. Yeah. And but then everyone could see that instead of going, what's happening and having to put in an inquiry, you know? Yeah, and we can develop things like yearly, like budget spreadsheets where, you know, this year there's no conference. So then you know, it's just like it breaks down into like each zone and like what each zone is essentially like budgeted and their amount. We're like, okay, you're getting this amount based on your number here. I mean, this is, I mean, this is almost sounding exactly like the way that we divvy up our funding for, um, for the college, you know, like this is how we, with our studio course fees, we give each course a, a budget amount based on the number of students enrolled. Um, and the number of course fees sort of collected through that. So then it just regurgitates back to back to the students and whatnot. And then we have usually like a little contingent and general fund section, you know, that like everybody can kind of like dip into, you know, it's like a general pool, you know. Yeah, and I was definitely thinking like, definitely good for transparency, but also like a accountant would love us. Like <laughs> if everything is in a spreadsheet and, you know, tracked in terms of what's spending and where it's going and when it was spent. Um, so for responsibilities, do we want to say something like drafting request for funds pertaining to guild activities and programming subject to board approval? That sounds great. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Would somebody else be able to take over typing? I'm sorry, he's only <laughs> being quiet in my lap. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think this is a really good idea. And that way they do have like the ability to advocate for funds, the ability to say, well, the book club is really popping off, but we'd like to be able to have like a public fund for buying books for people, you know, um, so that everybody can participate in need be and it would also be a really good way for them to say well I'm reporting a surplus so I don't actually need you know this purchase you know so were we going to put that in the uh, in the officer's document or the board document in the officer's document because the okay, officers so this... are the ones who are going to have the responsibility to request that funding okay, yeah so this is a whole second this is a whole fifth section um or... No, I think it's in responsibilities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. And we could we could add to that, you know, I don't know how to phrase it, but like that they need to 
hold on to the receipts as well. A uh, proper for any and all allocated record. spending. Proper record keeping. Okay, so repeat it to me again. How did we want to word that? I I wrote uh, drafting request for funds pertaining to guild activities and programs uh, subject to board approval. Okay. Um, and then I suppose we could add something about maintaining what maintaining accurate records of all money spent in I was gonna say in service of the guild. <laughs> um, Should we actually like clarify that officers would be responsible for assisting the board in maintaining those transparent records? Because the officers are probably gonna be the people that, you know, might end up with the receipt. Um, Depending, it depends on how this really works out. Because if they're the only ones who purchase anything, um, if the board members specifically are the ones who actually purchase things, then that should be okay. Do you want to leave? Okay, fine. I feel like the board should be the purchasers. So that way, we're not giving like the card or bank account info to like other people. Yeah. But we could maybe issue something like a reimbursement. Like if somebody need, if a zone rep needed to make their own purchase, we could provide them with the tax exemption number and, mm -hmm. or, ooh, wait, doesn't that get really tricky? Cause only, can't we only have tax exemption numbers based in the state? Mm -hmm. So if they're not in North Carolina, so then technically the board would mm -hmm. be the only ones who can purchase. Yeah, I so think no that's- zone reps can purchase. Yeah, we run, well, I'll have to think about that, but I think you're right. Um, I'm trying to think about MAPC and if the Indiana VP is the only one that can purchase stuff, but I don't know. Yeah, Chelsea brings up a good point. I mean, purchases would need to be made online where that stuff can't necessarily be isn't as like fickle, you know, in person stuff doesn't have to be, you know, or by phone with a place. Yeah. 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 So clever. These are clever. These are clever. Okay, so what, so what do we need to add then to this? So I have so far, the board would maintain transparent records of all transactions and requests. Um, and would be primary purchasing agents that could extend, that can extend Ooh, rights, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> to, to zone reps. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. I think uh, the board of maintain transparent is all transparent. I'm just writing real quick. under we could just say if necessary yeah you know what this might actually be easier if we just said um primary purchasing can be extended to the representatives as necessary because we don't necessarily need to say the board is maintaining transparent records because i think that we've kind of made that clear here, you mm -hmm. know, and in our mission statement, um, we just had a moment where we were like, because that goes under reviewing and approving the guild budget, essentially. Um, so yeah, we could shorten it that way. Mm -hmm. ah, sorry. Did you want me to make that change? I can do it, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. I remember how to type. 
Mm. It's okay. Sometimes I forget how to talk now. Very <laughs> pretty. Actually, yeah. Just cut all that to purchasing abilities. And instead, I'm going to say at board discretion. I think we should put something in there like what Kay said about it being like quarterly, just so that that becomes clear to people. Um, I'm not sure where to put that. Quart drafting and drafting. Quarterly requests? I don't know. It could just be too that we are, that we have quarterly rounds of requests that are accepted. That way like certain zones, like maybe certain zones don't have requests that they need to make four times a year. Maybe they need just like one really big purchase in the year. Yeah, and that's like kind of it. So it could just How be like, this is a round of proposals being accepted. How would we phrase that? That um, proposals are accepted X amount of times a year within this time frame, and the board is, will be like looking over um, the proposals only during, I don't like to structure it that way where it's like so rigid where it's like we're only going to be looking things at that time um because i think like unexpected things come up um so maybe i don't know maybe quarterly isn't right just some sort of language about like uh there will be like open times and then sort of like emergency or like urgent times or something there is a um, loophole in the way that we've already written the phrase purchasing abilities may be extended to zone representatives at the discretion of the board. So that could go ahead and kind of address what you're talking about where, you know, you can come to the board and say, um, <laughs> 911, I need like $35 for the purchasing software and I didn't realize that I did or whatever. Um, and then they can just say, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I mean, I like there being some sort of structure just because, um, when you know you have a deadline coming up, you know that a couple weeks before, like a month before, you need to really start planning and thinking about those things. So rather than it always being like a hustle and a scramble, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll know that there's like a date coming up, um, but still yeah. keep the possibility for the rolling basis type thing. Yeah, well, let's see. How often do board members meet again? Is it twice a year or four times a year? Because we could just tie it to the board member meeting. You're right. Um, where is my thing? There it is. At least twice a year. So maybe we do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because isn't that, I mean, isn't that kind of like how Arts KC was with their way they distributed their grants? Didn't they have yeah. like two periods a year that they would issue them? Yeah. There we go. Um, I think that probably satisfies both requirements because it gives a little bit of wiggle room, but also has, because that is very true, especially with finances. Um, it is good to have it in your mind, like, okay, I need to get this done. Um, because sometimes it takes a month for you to realize what's going on, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like as a zone rep, you'd have to like check in with all your people and in, in your area and do like a lot of field research. Yeah, and say like, what is it that you all would like to do? What kinds of, you know, funding do you need? Do you want to do? Because different zones might have different focuses. They might prefer to do like um, exhibitions with their funds. They might prefer to do book clubs with their funds. They might prefer to do like um, funding a podcast from a certain region or something like that. So that'll all kind of be different. And then of course we'll have eventually 
one zone representative that, or one zone that is running a um, event of some kind. So I think that's a good idea. So with that, I think, do we need to add anything else here for their responsibilities? I mean, to me, that was the only one when I was reading this earlier that seemed left out like financial responsibilities, because I was looking at, you know, in my mind, at least when we're creating the zone representatives, they're all the same. So are we hitting all of the traditional responsibilities, at least? Um, and I think, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good point. I was like, that was seemed to be the only one that I was like, well, who's money? What about Oh wait, is there, I can't remember, Did we have one about meetings, like the zone reps also need to be attending meetings too? So I figured we would actually make that a separate section Okay. Um, and give them the same kind of like, there's a certain number of meetings that must be held with all zone representatives per year. And then maybe we say all zone representatives should go to the board of directors meetings. Yeah, that's as what I was, possible. yeah, like full member meetings where like a roll call happens. Mm -hmm. Um, so we stopped at taking on the leadership positions within teams, and then we also talked about clear communication between all of the, we're essentially zone representatives are the communication between the board and the um, membership. They also need to communicate with teams and committees. And then establishing consistent and appropriate roles, routines, deadlines, and communication with the specific team ascribed to the individual zone representative. So I think maybe the next thing we talk about is teams or meetings, which would we rather kind of go into? I think meetings. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a big, that's a big um, section. Okay. But also, I mean, like, it's just important. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my format. Go away. Sit down. I know. Um, so with this, we will probably want to say, so how often do we want the, I guess we could start with um, zone representatives are expected to um, attend board meetings. Is that all well, well, they, meetings or just like the the yearly one? Um, I think just the yearly ones. So I agree. Yeah, I, I can't well, imagine that they would like have to go to every single meeting that a board that the, the board puts together. So maybe at least one board meeting per year. Um, the the big one. Yeah, well, they, have, they have two big ones. Yeah. So shouldn't, um, shouldn't it be required that they go to both? Sorry, yeah. yeah. It, I can't remember if there was one or two, but the big ones, they should be there. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay. I don't know how to denote that. So the major board meetings, I um, guess. The bi yearly board meetings. Okay. Oh, so well, what did we, how did we refer to it in the board? Hang on. We referred to it as at least twice a year virtually. Regular meetings of oh. the board must be um, held at times set by resolution, et cetera, et cetera. Then special meetings. So I guess we could say regular meetings of the board because spe yeah. special and regular are different. Yeah. So I was just like thinking of like how we worded it and one and I was thinking about consistency. Yeah, no, that's a good thing. Um, zone representatives are expected to attend regular meetings of the board in addition to at least, should we say four zone representative meetings where the zone representatives are all present? Four sounds good. Should I call them quarterly? Cause it'd be weird if they just all met <laughs> in one month, you know? Um, 
quarterly. Do you have a set date that they all need to meet or? No, I think do, it's good to just have it quarterly because if we get too specific, then people aren't going to be able to show up, you know? Um, hmm. I no, actually I think, think I'll say the majority of zone. Mm, I'd rather say most, but. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because I was like, they, like it. I think it would be even hard. Like even if they plan it all together, it would still be hard for some, just because of all the different time zones. Mm -hmm. to make yeah. It. And I do think most people will um, be able to think, okay, quarterly. So once per season, you know. Yeah. Once in okay. winter, once in fall, etc. So. Does there need to be like a percentage or? No, yes. I think majority is probably fine. Okay. Unless we'd like to say like a two thirds majority, in which case we'd have more uh, attendance. I think it hurts to mention that because otherwise it could be interpreted in a way that we didn't intend, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there should be some sort of record. I mean, like who knows? Well, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess this is like our future now. Like this is what we're doing now. We're on Zoom and we're recording it, but there has to be some kind of record of the meeting whether that be a youtube video or a or a recording recording the minutes yeah that was the only other thing i was thinking too is if there's no secretary right who's recording the minutes and then i was like well maybe we just say all meetings must be recorded um and that is our minutes and at, right. And act acts as meeting minutes or something. Right. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, I am going to add. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And share to the membership. Um, is that in this? I don't know if it's in the board of directors one. That's what's my other question. Is it? Yeah. Well, if it's not in the board of directors, we literally can put it in our miscellaneous articles. Oh yeah and say all meetings will be recorded and have closed captions and be, you know. If it's video, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. I have a thought about this. Um, so I don't, I don't know if, um, I wanna make sure that the meetings are accessible to people in other ways as well. And sometimes watching like an hour long or two hour long YouTube video isn't always that or even reading the transcript. So I think that minutes, like handwritten minutes are still a really good idea. Um, and in terms of not having a secretary or like one person that's responsible for it every meeting, it could be on a rotating basis since they're only meeting a few times a year. It's like, okay, um, you know, Johnny, you do it this time and then next time it'll be Sarah. And then the next time it'll be, you know, whoever else um, is in attendance. And I just, I, yeah, I just want to make sure that it's like, as accessible as possible to people. Um, so what it, we could actually do is, so Zoom creates a transcript that actually says people's names next to what they are saying. Um, and it literally is a transcript. I just send them to Ruben to upload as CCUs. And so what we could do is just have somebody literally edit the transcript and then make that publicly available because that cuts out a huge body of like, transcript work is super involved and takes a really long time. Um, and so essentially they'd just be waiting for the YouTube team to finish their um, edit, or maybe they would do the edit first and then send it on to the YouTube team to CC. The big problem is like seeing, okay, well, how can we do this as fast as possible so that it's accessible as immediately as possible? And then Ruben also said something about language. Um, sorry to kind of move on, but I did want to address that. It's gonna get really complicated if we are concerned about language this quickly. Um, I will say that different zone meetings might happen in different languages. So again, going to like Germany, they might say, okay, well, at our meetings, we'll have to decide like, do we do German? Or there's probably parts of Belgium that are in that time zone. I don't know, I can't remember maps. 
Um, <laughs> but there's probably other countries that speak a different language that are like, mm, German's not super accessible. So I think that's something that's gonna have to be determined by zone representatives at the time and based on the demographics because it gets a little too nuanced, especially when you get into densely um, populated areas like Europe. Because for us, it's like, well, you know, for most of the US, it's going to be English as well as Canada, it's going to be English and we're the ones who are in that, you know, stripe of the time zone. And then in most of the, you know, South Americas, it will be Spanish. There will be some Portuguese speakers, but, you know, it's a little easier for them than it would be for like, if we were in China um, or time zones that have both China, Korea and Japan, <laughs> then it's like, okay, how do we, you know, subtitle those? So I think that gets, that's just gonna have to be up to the membership in those areas. Maybe that's something that they can request funding for to like hire translators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or um, like the YouTube team or whoever is making this available to the membership can also provide copies, right? Like we are able to distribute it in multiple languages at once, right? Yeah, because you can upload multiple different um, CCs to things on YouTube pretty easily. It's the same way that we upload the English ones. It's just a matter of like, are we going to be able to pay somebody to do translation work? Because that's very labor intensive. So I think that's a little bit, that's not something that should necessarily go in our bylaws. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then as far as just making sure that there are closed captions, um, maybe I think I'll take out closed captions here. Actually, I think I might take this whole section out and we might talk about that in miscellaneous where we say it is up to the membership to determine the best way for information to be distributed within their time zone. Um, that's great. That's exactly, that's like nail on the head. Yeah. Well, and then okay. it can pertain to all meetings too. So that way we don't have to worry about whether it's in the officers or in the boards or what have you, but every meeting. Because it might not be useful for them to have the officers responsible for that, mm -hmm. you know, because it could be that all the officers somehow are German and they're like, okay, but I live in France, uh, <laughs> you know, or Finland or something more Cyrillic. Um, so miscellaneous, let's see. How, I'm gonna just describe that as a recording and accessibility clause. And that way it's easier for the membership to address the problem um, if it does become a problem. If they're like, I can't access these meetings and you know, certain zone representatives are not helping with that. And that gives them the ability to say, okay, this is how we, you know, edit that or change that. So I'm just going to erase that. Um, I am going to keep that it is a virtual meeting because we do need to say that. Um, and then at which two thirds majority of zone representatives must be present. And then what else should we put for meetings? I think in the board of directors, we talk about special meetings. Any meeting of the board, oh, we should just copy paste this part actually. And then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna copy paste all of this and then we can kind of edit it from there. So any meeting of the board may be held in, okay. So any meeting of, may be held in a form other than their physical presence, such as conferences or teleconferences, as long as all, I guess I'll just call them representatives, participate in the meeting, participating in the meeting, they simultaneously communicate with one another. So this is the next part. Special meetings may be called by or at the request of any of the zone representatives. I guess I should say of the zone. Notice must be given at least two weeks in advance. I do think that's still a good idea. 
um, by any usual means of communication to each member. And any action taken at a special meeting shall be voidable upon a failure to obtain acknowledgement of receipt of notice from any zone representative. I also think that's important. Mm -hmm. Notice must be given at least one business week before the meeting date. This was to the zone representatives and the membership. That would be kind of redundant. So instead mm -hmm. we could say, just kind of swap it around. Um, so it says, to both the board and the membership. Mm -hmm. Action on specific items can be taken by the board through unanimous written vote. I feel uncomfortable with that when it comes to zone representatives. I don't think their actions should be taking place in writing. We mostly put that into the board so that they could um, make financial decisions more in a streamlined, effective way. Um, but I don't think that the uh, zone representatives have any action that should be taking place in that way. You know what I mean? Is that okay with everybody for me to take that out? I mean, if they're making decisions uh, on behalf of like their own zone, I think it makes sense. Otherwise, um, just to make the meetings productive and make sure they can get things done within their zone that they need to get done, I guess I don't really understand. Um, yeah, I think it should stay because it doesn't affect the entire guild. It will just theoretically affect their zone. Or am I misunderstanding? Well, so the zone representative meetings would have all of them present to vote on things that pertain to all of the guild. I see. Zone representatives on their own, I do think, should have that ability um, because that falls under line of like team membership and like working with teams, but also just generally. Like you don't need to um, get written permission from everybody to make a drafted like um, purchase request or something like that. You don't really need that because that only affects your zone. Um, or to say, oh, I'd like to start doing this. You don't necessarily need your zone. I don't think you would need zone representatives to agree with you to have you be allowed to do like a book club. I think you should just be allowed to do a book club without meeting with anybody That's or sure. talking to anybody, you know? Mm -hmm. It's whenever it starts to cost money that it's like, okay, now I have to ask the board, you know? But I do think it's important for the zone representatives to meet because they might be talking about like guildwide events, you know, and who's going to be taking over that. That I think does require them all to meet. Um, they might be talking about guild-wide programming as well. So like meet our members, do we keep doing that? You know, do we put money into it? Are we able to give people, you know, financial compensation for that? Those kinds of conversations, they, those are the ones that make me uncomfortable to happen in writing. You know what I mean? Because that's less of a public forum than the recorded meeting. I mean, so you, you see the meeting as more of a way of communicating with each other rather than needing to vote on anything. Yeah, or they will meet to vote on things that are like, let's say I'm a zone representative for EST and I've been talking with other zone representatives and I'm like, you know, I really think personally that it's time for us to have an in-person conference or a virtual conference or something. I need to get the other zone representatives in on that and they need to be able to like vote on programming for that or vote to have a committee or vote to, you know, we do need to have that kind of a conversation. Um, 
that I think needs to happen publicly. But if I'm like, hey, you know, a lot of people in my area have said that they would like to have an exhibition, but I don't have to pay for anything. There's no money involved. It's just going to be like, like what we're doing now with Rise and Soul. I don't think that has to go to these meetings. You know what I mean? That's more under the category of like everyday behaviors of the guild. So I think that's kind of the delineation that I have. Is, is it going to involve all guild members internationally or nationwide, however we end up deciding to be structured? Or is it just gonna affect the members in my zone, you know, and it's free? Because in that case, just I feel like you could just do it, you know? Like have your members vote on it and then do it. Does that make sense? I think so, yes. I guess where I'm curious is do we need to decide, like lay out something about how decisions are made, right? Um, that, I mean, does it say, I'm, I'm sorry, I only looked at the, <laughs> the responsibilities for the officers like this morning, but does it say like how they decide things, right? And include the membership? I know, I hear you. Um, I, I know. And then, um, but does it, you know, and then, okay, great. Now I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> I gotta let them outside. I'll be right back. <laughs> I think um, I think that's a good point. Like maybe we should elaborate that elaborate on that in the miscellaneous or something. Because I think just saying like does it align with the mission? Because that seems like the most basic thing to go towards. Like does this event that I want to do align with the mission? Um, maybe that could be expanded upon. It seems like it does need to be addressed at some point, though. Yeah, I think that is something we should just let up. I'm, I'm going to let that up to you all because I think that is a conversation we need to have where, you know, what do the zone representatives do together? Because um, I just presented something that came off the top of my head. I didn't have like a plan plan for that. And I do agree, like it is important for us to talk about like, do they have to meet to vote? on things and to vote on programming or do they just need to meet to say hey i'm tired of being in charge of this team <laughs> and what we've been doing now is the interim board has been meeting bi-weekly to update each other on what the teams are doing a lot of that is because we're creating a lot of programming right now um and so maybe what it is is they have to meet before they can create new programming maybe that's our line and then just like regular, like we don't need to meet to say, oh yeah, meet our members is just still happening, <laughs> you know? Um, I think it would be just like, do I have a proposal? And then just deciding whether or not the zone representatives are into it. Cause we don't really do formal votes right now. We just kind of talk about whether or not we think it would be a good idea, but that's because there's only five of us, you know, and we are the board and the officers, so. I don't know. What do you all think? Yeah, I mean, I think it would be helpful to kind of give an instance as to what requires a majority of, a, of support, because it does seem, at least from what we've written and in intuitive, that if you're a zone representative and if it just concerns your zone, you can act accordingly as long as you're within the mission statement. But then when does it not? Like, when do you need to get the other zone representatives on board? When do you, yeah, like what kind of circumstances, I guess, is what I'm curious as to how we would word that or think about that. Yeah, I mean, I can think of like a few things that would be problematic. Um, for instance, like traveling in the name of RIPG during a pandemic, like something really specific like that. Maybe it doesn't need to be like, um, like laid out, but I think by having meetings where it's like people are saying the things that they wanna do and they're like laying out some of the details, it's, it just gets another couple sets of eyes on it just to make sure that it doesn't um, conflict with 
with our mission and, and what we think is uh, acceptable and right, you know? Or maybe we don't, I don't know. Maybe we don't need to be this specific. <laughs> like, I'm just like, maybe, you know, meetings, regular meetings, zone representative meetings are about communication, deal, you know, talking, discussing like team organization and things like that. And maybe special, we have a section for special meetings where we talk about what those are and what that might entail. Cause it seems like if it's a, something that needs a lot of approval or a lot of cross all of this like cross working it would be more of a special thing than a regular meeting but i don't know maybe that's not at all i don't know my brain is starting to hurt a little sorry <laughs> no i'm with you i'm definitely with you um it's hard to like think really abstractly about this considering the structures like just now you know like we're building it as we go so i'm trying to think about even the way that we're functioning right now we're like um the interim board members like have a group text and we're also really involved on discord and there's just like tons of communication. I think that's like really important. And I just don't want to lose that. You know, I don't want to, I, I just don't want to lose it as all. Well. Yeah. And I think you both made a good point. I mean, if we tie it back to the responsibility is we really, what responsibilities could be addressed at a meeting, you know, um, that we've explicitly stated, um, checking to make sure we're upholding the mission goals and objectives that can happen there. Mm -hmm. um, proposing fellow representative or board member removals. That could happen at those meetings as well. That's obviously not going to be something we do via writing. That's uncomfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. um, support raising financial, like fundraising meetings. That's something that it makes more sense to do in person, you know. Um, contributing to that biennial review, I think, is also something that would need to happen in person. So I think we, I think Ani is right and that we might be getting too specific with the usage of the meeting. Because if these things need to happen and they're the responsibilities, they're gonna happen face-to-face, -face, as face-to-face -face as we are, you know? They're not gonna be something that, you know, happens just on a private chat. Um, because if it does, then that's violating transparency. So maybe that's something else we add here is not just clear communication, but transparent communication. So that people understand you should be recording your meetings and uploading them you should be talking to these things about these things on you know if we keep up with discord we should be talking about it publicly on discord or um, publicly in these meetings so i think that's a good idea i do think like the leadership positions with teams is something we can separate really easily from that because like Kay and i we don't have in-person meetings to talk about what we're going to talk about in incorporation because it's not necessary because <laughs> we know you know we have a schedule and we send each other messages publicly or not publicly um but generally speaking publicly instagram we try to make the messages public through discord um but we don't necessarily meet with our instagram team we just message people through discord and say like hey can somebody do this so I think maybe that is the model that we will be passing down. And that model might not be sustainable in the future. So if we become too specific, we might be trapping people in a model that's not capable of growing, you know? Yeah. So I think maybe we just leave it at this mm -hmm. um, and we remove this section so that nothing can happen, no actual action on specific items can happen written, you know, in a written form. That way they have to meet in person or do it through Discord. Um, okay. Does that feel good <laughs> to everybody, that decision? Before I move on. Chelsea says they're still on the team to lay out a clear path to amend the bylaws. Yes, yeah, 
And that I think is going to be in the, um, so I should finish the statement for people who are watching. <laughs> so um, laying out a clear path to amending the bylaws so that if the organization needs to change, flex or grow, they know how. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. And that's also something that's gonna be in our, I think it'll go in our miscellaneous um, provision. So, okay, so this is essentially it for meetings. Um, yeah, I think it does too. It does fit well with our meeting. So then our next section is teams. And that's gonna be a big one. So I would like to hear from everybody's perspective, like you've all either been on a team or you've been in a leadership role on a team. What do we need to put here? Should it be a list essentially of the teams now, or is that too limiting? Or should it be um, like a description of what teams are created for and how they kind of run? How, how should we phrase this? I would I include, should, oh, sorry, go ahead, Chelsea. Sorry. I would include the, um, what teams are, why they're created, the current teams we have, a process for creating a new team or dissolving a team. For instance, we will not need to have an incorporation team once we're incorporated. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking something too along the lines of like, what is the general definition of the team of teams? And then like, how are they, how are they formed? Just like Chelsea said, and then going ahead and kind of like listing that, like what exists like in its current Right, like the social media team is something that we're always going to have as an online organization. So spelling out what that is and what they handle. Um, mm -hmm. And if we break that down into this team is Instagram, this team is YouTube, are those different teams? Is there one day where people don't use YouTube anymore because there's like four ads before every video? <sighs> so should we not be specific about platforms that might become outdated? Yeah, I think also, that's a very good idea. Also, I think like a general, well, I don't know, maybe this is the place, if the bylaws are the place for this, but the, what the expectations for the amount of work like are, like I was just thinking today, like what, like I was just kind of random, just cause this is what I do. Like I was just randomly thinking about like how many hours per week I generally kind of like spend um, doing some of the like team work. Um, and then thinking about like kind of like a rough, like two to five hours a week, sometimes more, you know, it just like kind of depends. But like having, I don't know, I don't know if that's like the place for, if the bylaws is a place for something like that, but like a list, like an expectation of like what you're getting into, like when you are setting the expectation for teams. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Um, I think just hearing what you've said to me as a group, it might actually be a good idea for us to have teams as a separate article. That's what so, I was um, asking. Yes. Yeah, because, I mean, we've mentioned it here, but we can also say, you know, reference the team article. I think we need to mention it here as it pertains to the powers of the uh, zone representatives. Yeah. Um, because that's why this is, we need to talk about teams because who forms the teams, right? And so I think the formation of the teams and the zone representatives role in the teams needs to be laid out here. But I think teams seems like it's membership. It's its own thing. Like it needs to be, I think it needs to be its own thing like membership, like we would treat the membership check, um, article rather. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. So I've, I've edited it so that it now says team leadership instead. So we can describe what that means. Um, and that way it's a little bit more specific. So I guess what I will ask is, so right now we have two interim board members per team and they are overlapping. So Kay and I, so I am the primary person for incorporation, Kay is the secondary person, which means like, you know, if I can't make it to a meeting, Kay would hold that meeting. 
Um, but also you can ask both myself and Kay a question about what we're doing as the incorporation team. But for Instagram, Kay is the primary person. And so they are the kind of driving force there where they're the person who's going to answer questions. And so I spend a lot of time going, hey, Kay, here's a question. <laughs> and they are very patient in the answer me. <laughs> um, but that's kind of the model that we've had. I don't know if that's the model that other leadership roles have had. So. I don't know. I mean, we both have equal executive ability in both of these situations, but at the same time, it's like a conversation between two people instead of one person just being like, this is what we're doing, everyone. If I can't make it to this meeting, we're just not gonna have a meeting, you know? Um, so is that something we'd like to continue with? And what were you gonna say? I was gonna mean like introduce the idea of like plasticity within like the teams, like the ability to like kind of transform within the organization, like based on how many zone representatives, you know, exist, you know, like say there's a bunch of zone representatives, but there's only like four or five teams. And like, maybe it's like, like there's always gonna be a primary secondary, but if there's like a ton of zone representatives, that way like each one is sort of like accounted for, they're gonna be primary, secondary, tertiary, like it can just sort of like the number of leaders can sort of grow as needed with the guild, like just like including language that addresses that, that type of plasticity and flexibility. Okay, so we can kind of keep with that. Sorry, as you were talking, it occurred to me that we might also want to say that um, officers, our zone representatives, are the ones who get to reformat the team without necessarily having to go to the board or waiting for like an amendment to the bylaws. I do think that would be good, especially yeah. since we're a young institution. Okay. Yeah, I know, get down, get down. You'll be less sad if you don't look. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, so I guess like initially the first thing that should be kind of laid out in this section should be first and foremost, like teams are defined by the zone representatives. Um, and can be like shaped and reshaped at the will of the zone reps, at the need of the zone reps. Yeah. Would you mind typing yeah. that? I'm sorry. I just saw, I, I just witnessed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what's really important for this section is like, where do the teams, like the teams are coming from the zone representatives and then they're able to to adapt to the needs of the membership. So as far as like, um, like an Instagram handle for RIPG, uh, there would be like a main Instagram and that would be our only Instagram, correct? Like there wouldn't be like uh, zone RIPG Instagrams. That would be like, that's a no, right? For now, for sure. Like if we get to the point where we've got a hundred people on the East Coast, they might start wanting their own Instagram and that would be something they'd have to like talk to okay. the zone representatives about, you know? Then I but think for that, now, that for that sure, just be, one. Yeah, that should go into this document also just to make it like real clear. And I know we're like vaguely mentioning that with what Ruben is typing out right now where it's like the ebbing and the flowing. So I guess maybe it is there, yeah. Yeah, I think giving them as much flexibility as possible, especially in the early days, is a good idea. Because I think it'll really give people the ability to say like, okay, we really need to, <laughs> you know, especially if they start having a book club and the book clubs really take off. I don't know why I'm harping on book clubs specifically, but as an example, that really takes off. It may be that we now need a book club team, you know? Yeah. Um, just to kind of structure that or whatever, you know, or events 
we might start having more and more just social events and we would need something for that. How many zone representatives need to lead a team? I think at least two. I think that's a good way to do it. That's a good question. We say at least this many, you know, at most. Maybe we don't say at most. I don't know. A minimum of two zone representatives shall yeah. be required to lead a team. Yeah, that's perfect. Where are we standing now, bud? Um, and then do we need to define what leadership looks like or is it just enough to say development impl implanta implementation? <laughs> structure and organization. I think that's probably enough. You know, I think it's a nice fluid way to say that because development can mean different things. It could be like, oh, we're further developing this team. So that makes it easy and flexible for us to say, okay, Instagram on its own is no longer working. Let's do social media that could also be considered development. Um, it could also be considered structure. It could also just be considered organization. Um, I don't know if there's anything more specific to put there. I mean, implementation, structure I think goes with like scheduling, which we've already kind of talked about in the responsibilities. Um, Yeah, I think that's enough, but I don't know if anybody else disagrees. Well, yeah, then 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 my next thing was like, well, then are we almost done, right? Is it enough here to say how they're organized or essentially like how uh, the zone representatives are involved and they're in, you know, inception and then the, you know, the minimum requirement for a team in terms of zone representative leadership? Like, does there need to be anything else in this section? Because again, in my mind, we're having a whole other article that lays that out a bit more specifically as to actually what the teams are. I think, I don't know, we could put something here. Stop looking at me. We could put something here about, um, not impeachment necessarily, but about like shuffling team leadership. Uh, because that is something that, you know, I would like it to be possible for, I mean, two years is a long dedication. If somebody is like trying to have children or has children or, you know, even with like COVID-19, there might be something like this might happen again. I hope not, but, <laughs> you know, it might happen again within the existence of this organization. And if somebody says, okay, I can't be in charge of this specific team anymore, like social media is constant contact, you know? Transference um, leadership to other zone representatives as well as removal if someone needs to be removed. Yes. And like, when would that happen and where would that happen? So would that have to happen at the meeting? You know, a full zone representative um, meeting would have to be occurring, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a better way to say that, I'm sure, but like at least two thirds of the zone of representatives must vote on that because I don't know if that's necessarily something that like the general membership needs to be involved in. I don't think the general membership should be able to determine whether or not somebody can <laughs> continue to commit their time, you know. Um, I think, yeah, just having something that says that in, in the instance of um, a zone representative needing to remove themselves from our leadership position. They just need to submit something. I just, you know, maybe as how we handle board members not being board members anymore. Just like saying, hey, I can't do this anymore. And some, some writing maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, so what did they, what did they say about that? So I started writing team leadership can be assessed quarterly or through an official and that's kind of where I'm like, oh, what are we calling? Yeah. It? <laughs> um, I think so. In this, it says any director may resign at any time 
by giving written notice to the board that resignation takes effect upon receipt of notice um, and the acceptance of such resignation shall not necessarily not be necessary to make it effective. So like they should be able to just say, I gotta go. Yeah. Um, any director may be removed at any time with or without cause by majority of responding membership or through direct violation of the code of conduct of the guild. So I think maybe we copy paste this and change some of the terms. Yeah, sure. That doesn't really give you an end to your sentence, which I think is also important. <laughs> I don't know. Let's, we can just merge what we have. Go ahead. Do you, do you already have it copied? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. And then the one thing here is I don't think this should be a special election affair. I think this should just be somebody within the zone of representatives because they've already been elected. You know what I mean? All zone of representatives, sorry, every zone representative has already been elected. So I think instead they should just volunteer. A volunteer from the representative zone, representative zone, the zone of representatives volunteer maybe yeah. will be assigned to fulfill that leadership role. Yeah, I think it should be a matter of like, it gets brought up to all of the zone of representatives, like, okay, um, let's say it's me, Becky has resigned as a, an officer or even just as a leadership person, you know, as a person with a leadership role, who would like to fill that position amongst us, the zone of representatives, you know, because I think it's important for people to be able to act, like advocate for their own skill set. Yeah. So I'd have yeah. a volun okay, I gotta write this down. Yeah, my brain also so is this also it. saying <laughs> is this also indicating that we need to have a code of conduct written? Yes, we will have a code of conduct written. Okay. I mean, it makes sense that if you violate the code of conduct for members, zone representatives or board members, it would apply to your team leadership. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we also should, I guess, lay this out. Um, here as well, I guess. Did we talk about how they're elected? Yeah, we talked about their election. So we already kind of talked about this. I think we should also add the code of conduct up here in the election in terms. So until their death, resignation, retirement, disqual well, disqualification, I think covers that. So mm -hmm. maybe it's in vacancies. Um, so they can submit resignation as a board, or sorry, as an officer um, in writing to the board. Vacancies are then filled through a special election process. Okay. Any officer or assistant officer may also be removed from office <laughs> by, so I guess we should change that to representative. may also be removed from office by the membership upon such terms laid out in the election committee section of these articles. I think I'm gonna just add or through violation of the code of conduct. There we go. Just to have it all like agreeing with itself. Um, so you can not only lose your role as an elected official but you can also lose your um, team leadership role. So we're clear about that through the code of conduct, through violating the code of conduct. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, I feel like that's probably it, right? Like we can swap team leadership if necessary. Um, I mean, did we want to include how vacancies of team leaderships shall be filled? Did we write that down somewhere? Did yeah, I, voluntary. Yeah, I think it's just going to be voluntary. Well, um, 
I mean, do we need to say like vacancy of team leadership shall be filled by voluntary nomination or self-nomination uh, at a meeting of the zone representatives? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that should go at the end of this because we've talked about how somebody could re be removed or leave. And I think we could just add a statement that says any vacancies created this in these ways can be filled by. Okay, um, yeah. That way we don't necessarily need to like have a huge meet, like vote about it, right? And I think that's important to say. Another or a different, which is better? I think they both work, right? What's the rest of the sentence? Um, through, yeah, that would be helpful, right? The self-nomination of another um, board or the zone representative. So, eh. Another's fine. Okay. Okay, cool. So that's team leadership. Um, the next thing that we needed to add um, is maybe waiver of notice for meetings, um, which we could just copy paste from the board of directors and edit. And that was, again, just about like, you know, if you basically say like, I don't want to be notified, I'm not going to be able to make it or whatever. Um, you can waive notice of the meeting. And that way, it's not a big deal. If you say that you don't have notice. Mm -hmm. Because the way that we typed out meetings says everybody must be notified. So you can waive the notice and then we're not in trouble. Be section seven. Yes. Thank you. Any zone representative may waive notice of any meeting the attendance by a at a meeting shall constitute a waiver of notice of such meeting except where a zone representative attends a meeting for the expressed purpose of objecting to the transaction of any meet of any business because the meeting is not lawfully convened. Okay. Yeah. Can't hold secret meetings without me. Exactly. Any zone representative may object to violation of notice within a two week period after said unlawfully convened or called meeting through virtual or written means. Oh, what is a Z-Bay? What's happening to me? Okay. So there's that. And then I think we can go back to our original um, Dealey Bob, our template. So we've gotten through all of this kind of information. Rich. Treasurer, secretary. Or do we need other, other officers? Mm -mm. We're only going to have one form of officer. I didn't think so. Yeah. Um, so I guess it is surety. I'm not really familiar with what surety means. Okay, good. I was about to ask that. I was like, I didn't. Look <laughs> it up. I meant to look it up before this meeting because like that, I saw that when I was reading through. We're we we're probably going to be doing today, and I'm like, oh God, what does anything mean? Yeah. I looked it up, but I uh, kind of didn't get it because there were different definitions. Um, so a person who takes responsibility for another's performance of an undertaking. So sometimes in appearing in court or the payment of a debt. Yeah, that confused me. And then money to support an undertaking that someone will perform a duty, pay, like a guarantee basically, or the state of being certain, <laughs> which is what I thought it was. Um, We're super sure. Yeah. So a surety, surety bond or guarantee involves the promise by one party to assume responsibility for debt 
of a borrower if that borrow and that makes me feel uncomfortable well they're not because the it's, it's usually um like uh if you have insurance that that's what a surety is um like if you they assume responsibility for paying for the structural damage um because they okay. are your insurance they are insure uh, they are surety for you okay so i think we probably don't want that because i don't want the officers to ever have to pay for anything well and also they're not acting independently like there's never going to be a moment where they're not submitting something to the board it's not like it's like this is like saying that it feels like they need to be if the board directors can hold the officers accountable but since the officers aren't acting without their approval i don't think we need it right and right. they have to submit everything like all of their financial actions need to be submitted to the board anyway beforehand and then after they do it especially if we do reimbursements yeah and i think what's happening here like if you look at the two officers that they just us like that's the treasurer that's they're basically saying if you mess up with our money you have to pay us i'm not really sure what why they're mad at the president but maybe the president can also do financial things yeah it has something yeah. to do with them doing financial things like signing checks drafts or other orders of payment um yes usually so the think, gets a debit card <laughs> yeah so since the board is going to have the cards i don't think the heart of the cards. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I don't think we need to have this clause. So um, next is compensation of officers. And I tried so hard to remember what we decided for the board of directors, but then I started making myself go, but does that even apply to the officers? Because the officers are doing the daily tasks and mm -hmm. technically they're kind of staff. And I don't, so <laughs> I have a lot of like very mixed feelings and opinions here um, and I would love to hear what everybody else is thinking. So for context, what we said about the directors is none of them will receive compensation for their service in such capacity um, except that they might uh, by resolution provide within reason for the reimbursement of like travel, lodging expenses, um, barrier of removal for like technological or other materials necessary to perform the function, discounted or waived programming fees and waived membership fees. All of that is subject to economic feasibility. So like we wouldn't do that right now because we don't have any money, <laughs> you know. So what I guess I'll copy this just in case and maybe would it be easier to like combine these two or I don't know. What do you all think? I mean, that's the question is, do we want this to be, you know, entirely voluntary? Yes, if you're really expending personal expenses and if something is a barrier to your service, we'll take care of it. Otherwise, nothing. Or do we say you should get something and then if you should get something, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm le I lean towards no, again, no compensation just to, but again, I'm on the fence just because you are asking people to do a lot for free, right? <laughs> and especially because our, you know, I don't want to say target demographic because that's not the right phrase, but I think that helps you know what I mean because I can't yeah. think of the right phrase, <laughs> but like our member, yeah, our membership and the pool of people we would be getting to do this might be like more often than not be people of color who are generally at a disadvantage to receiving funds. And mm -hmm. the part that got me really confused is I even like went back to our initial interest meeting notes, which if you want to see those, I can pull them up. Um, and we did say something about like, we do want to compensate people for their labor. Mm -hmm. But then the examples we gave were like translators and designers and then there were like a couple of things that kind of sounded like officer roles that we've taken on but i don't know i don't know if it's and if we do give them some kind of financial compensation what what form would that take you know so the gift card to macy's like what do we you know what do we do with that so 
I don't know. I, I, I would definitely agree that like if there is any travel involved have reimbursements um, in their section two, but I'm also, if there's someone who is going to be working and compensated on a regular basis, that's then an employee. And that's like a very different um, like tax sort of thing. <laughs> well, I mean, we can, we can compensate them like as a nonprofit, yeah. they can technically. Yeah. But I think that, that, yeah, it does seem more like employment than like service. Yeah, it sounds like it's getting into employment territory. And then okay. we need them to track their hours. And then how is there, is their compensation based on at their self-reporting of hours or is their flat fee? Would we need to do that for like kind of what you just said, but more of like an honorarium or a stipend? I think it depends on how you word it. I think if we're, if we have a stipend, that's a one-time thing. So that's different. But if we're basing it based on their, uh, how, you know, their hourly uh, work, then yeah, then that gets a little tricky. I feel like it should be honorarium that can be decided upon based on what your budget is, because we kind of talked about, and again, I'm just making my corollary, you know, on a you you understand where I'm coming from, my corollary to like the way our department works. You know, when we have guest lecturers or guest artists, like we do, we draft up a contract called an agreement for services. Mm -hmm. And it's a set paid amount that the individual agrees to be, you know, compensated to. And it's with the understanding, it's like, look, this is the money that we can pay you, you know. I was going to say, we probably would have to have a contract, um, some sort of document that says they received this money for the services, because then what if, I mean, I guess we wouldn't take the money back if then they just dropped off the face of the earth, but I mean, then we potentially could. Well, in the, in like our agreement of services at KCAI, like there is a, like you have to complete, you have to kind of complete that work. And there's like a date that's like, it must be completed by like this date or something. And, you know, so that's just like, that all just depends on like how we put that within the contracts. Yeah, so we could literally put in the contract at the end of your service. Yeah. Based on whatever percentage of finances that we have at that point. And then we talked before about that kind of incentivizing people to do a better job as board members and that kind of felt icky. But does it feel icky when it's at the level of officers, you know? So would they, is what you're saying, they wouldn't be paid anything until, or given an honorarium or a stipend until their two years is up? Cause that seems a little like gross to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah. What if it is paid out at two separate moments? Does that make sense? So, Let's say we have a, that's the problem is we have no like income to like reference <laughs> right now, but let's say it's $50 and like at the end of the first year it's 25 and then they reassess how much they get. Ugh, I don't know. It gets really complicated. Um, that's the problem. Is it a reward? Like, is it, is it like a reward? Not a reward, but like, is it a, it a award? Like, is it an award? In which case it does make sense to pay out at the end. Um, but if, but then that doesn't always seem usable to people. Like that's where I am like, well, I mean, I would need that money before I'm doing the work right before my two years is up. So then that kind of takes it back into the realm of compensating like a fee. I don't know. I think that, I think we need to consider like what actions and what labor are we are we trying to pay for and fund? Because there's certainly probably going to be labor that just unfortunately like is not paid for. Certainly we can try to do as much as we can. And maybe that's the thing where a specific zone rep can be like in, within their proposal, be like for this thing that I want 
to, I need funding for, I also need funding to pay for myself as well, you know? And also like, is there a way for us to maybe like, like that's just funding through the guild, you know, but can we also like within membership give everyone rights to mutual aid, you know, fundraising? I also think, so what you're bringing up is really helpful, Ruben, because it just occurred to me, and this might be a terrible idea, um, what we could do, because the things that make the officer position so time consuming is team leadership. Yeah. And so what we could do is say team leadership itself comes with a stipend. Because that is where the majority of that labor is going to be happening. Um, if you're not a team member, but you are a zone representative, there's significantly less day-to-day -day activity, I guess is how I would say it. And so, I don't know, maybe we say um, those zone representatives who do t take on additional responsibilities as team leaders will receive an honorarium or stipend, some kind of award, we'll have to think about how to phrase that, um, for their labor. Because that is what I have found myself spending the majority of my time doing, is just like team leadership stuff. If I were just a zone of representative in this model, essentially my responsibility would be to go to meetings sometimes, um, organize events for my area, you know, a little bit more relaxed kind of stuff versus what's happening right now with like Instagram, where Kay and I are working at least an hour every single day, you know, that is something where I would feel more comfortable saying, yeah, you deserve to be compensated for that, you know. Um, Ruben suggested a non-fixed stipend commensurate to annual, annual budget, yeah. That phrase, that's the phrasing I just thought of. I do like that phrasing. Because um, that, that, that aligns too with what you what uh, you and Olivia brought up on at the very first meeting. You know, like it, you may only be getting 10 bucks, but that's what we have. And at least we're giving you something. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like the idea of tying it to team leadership because that's what I was just thinking. Like, well, what are we paying them for? And it seems like we should be paying people for when they really are organizing you know bigger things not bigger things but um like I can see of a team leadership for like a conference like I would definitely want to pay you know the zone representative who's heading up the team that is over a conference right you know so yeah Yeah, I think that's a good point too is, I mean, we're talking about the programming fees when we talk about the conference. So, I mean, I know it was an example, but maybe what it is is like regular um, zone representatives get conference and other programming fees waived. So if there's ever anything that comes with a fee, we waive that fee mm -hmm. um, because they need to be there. You know, if they're going to say like, I'm trying to think of a very specific event. So let's say they're doing It's weird to think about this because COVID-19, it makes everybody have to be at home. Um, <laughs> but let's say in the future, there's an exhibition, right? And they're taking on that extra effort to organize that exhibition. It's just for their zone. Like I would still like to be able to have some kind of compensation for them. So in that situation, we could waive the programming fee of their, like if they apply to the juried exhibition, waive the jurying exhibition for them that feels a little bit more comfortable to me because they're helping to organize that exhibition. You see what I'm saying? They're not jurying it, but they are doing extra labor. Whereas like team leadership is so much more continual investment of time and energy. Whereas like an event like that is going to be something that has like well, maybe like a month of planning, maybe a month of additional activity for that zone representative. 
And I think because of that probably doesn't deserve, not, I hate saying that it feels weird, but doesn't, it doesn't warrant compensation in that same way. I don't know. I don't know. I want to pay everybody. <laughs> so. Well, I think in terms of thinking about like being clear, it's hard to say, I think team leadership is good because it's a more identifiable way of saying what we're paying, like what is getting paid for, what is getting compensated, where if it's just like all zone representatives, it's like, well, what are they actually? Like, how are we quantifying it? So I think that's what we're gonna have to do until the time comes when these can all be paid <laughs> positions, right? Um, but I like, yeah, I like the idea of team leadership receiving a stipend and zone all zone representatives essentially having discounted or waived programming fees and waived a membership. Is that what we were saying? Basically the same, the similar benefits as to what was laid out in like the director's situation where like they'll get compensated for travel or reimbursed for travel, maybe barrier say, removal. Yeah. I would say the board will not be paid, Ruben. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they won't be. Never. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Ruben also made a good point about um, where we would include this language. I do think maybe we put it into the team leadership section. Um, yeah. I think that's a good place to put it. And then to also say, um, Kelsey said all membership benefits available to them for agreeing to like shepherd the member. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, sorry. I know I'm stopping my sentence halfway through, but I've answered my own thought. <laughs> um, so, okay, so in compensation of officers, we will say, um, because that's also kind of the demarcation they have here. The president may be paid reasonable compensation because they're doing additional labor it's kind of the same. It's like an additional level of leadership that you're taking on. Um, so I guess we should say, you know what, I think we should keep it in here the way that they have saying team leadership is entitled to a stipend. I also think we should say entitled to so that they can say, no, I don't want that. Just keep it in the, you know, because there might be some people who are like, mm, that's a weird, um, <laughs> especially if for instance, an ally ends up winning the election, they might really have feelings about accepting that stipend because they might be like, well, I'm a cisgendered white man. Um, and I've heard that a lot from like queer cisgendered white men too, where they're like, I don't wanna take this money away because it feels weird. Um, and from women as well. So that might be something that we also write into it where it's more flexible. You don't have to accept it. Um, Okay, what did I just say? I'm sorry. <laughs> I immediately forgot it after I made that point. Entitled to. Okay, team leadership. In the form of, and what did Ruben say before? I want to use exactly that. A, a look. A non fixed stipend commensurate and maybe we should say that well now let's say annual getting into the biannual budget is going to be weird um, and then we say no other officer who is a member okay we'll just say no other than representative may receive any compensation except as, and then everything we have down here. Um, I have two, two new things. So Ruben also added, can we create a continual mutual aid fund that that money can go into? 
Yeah, I think that's how we're going to treat our general pot of money is as a continual mutual aid fund, just as um, accessible to any member of the community at any level, because I think that's most in line with our um, mission. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's and I was saying that too with like if ever we get like a zone rep or somebody who wishes to decline payment, you know, for mm -hmm. some of those reasons that they are like that white cisgendered person, like I want my payment to go elsewhere to this specific thing, yeah. Or even not just that, but like they're in a better economic situation. Like, you know, they might mm -hmm. be like, I'm I don't I make enough, I don't need this. You yeah, know, anyone can do that, yeah. So I'm actually going to lay that out just so that they understand, because I think that is an important thing. Um, can choose to donate their compensation, I guess, back to the guild. Can we just say redistribute? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because donate would require us to do paperwork. <laughs> for us to yeah. pay um, them and then give it back. Yeah, because yeah. the board is distributing the money. The member can redistribute. Forgo. Forgo. Decline, like forgo or decline yeah. in lieu of keeping the stipend within the budget of the guild or the whatever. So I will say can decline compensation. period. I think that's probably enough, you know. Um, you want to say can choose to? I think so. I really, it's like itching for me to be like to put the money back. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's I mean, clear, you know. I don't know. Should I type that out? I don't mind. I agree. I, I like it being there. Yeah. Should I say to return funding to the guild? Or no, that implies that they're giving it back. Um, to, to keep funds for the mutual aid of the guild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the idea of it being like specific to like, it wouldn't just go back into money that we're using for programming or like whatever, it would go specifically to whatever mutual aid funds we have at the time or whatever pot of money that's in. Okay. And people cool. love to know where their money's going, so. Yes, they do. Um, and this also might make them feel more comfortable with it instead of saying, uh, well, I could do something with this money. It's saying, well, you could do this with your money, so. Okay, so no other representative may receive any compensation except as, and I'm actually going to say, um, this. Yeah. So receive any compensation for their service in such capacity, because I think that lets us kind of get away with the team leadership can, others and representatives can't, but it also could open the door in the future to us saying, okay, you're putting a lot of work into this event here is a, you know, some kind of stipend or honorarium. Um, no other zone representative, or as I think it was Ruben who brought this up, they could say um, part of my proposal is that you also pay me <laughs> for all the effort and labor I'm putting into this, you know? So no other zone representative shall receive any compensation for their service in such capacity, except that the so would it be the board of directors who, yeah, it would, because we're sending those to the board of directors, except that the board of directors may by resolution provide um, within reason, period. Should it be period or should it be comma? Because they should, I guess, should we say that they are entitled to reimbursement for actual travel, et cetera? Yes. Or should the board vote on that? I think they're entitled to it. 
right? What makes me uncomfortable with that is different people have different ideas of how to travel. Uh -huh. um, and so it may be that somebody travels to a conference and chooses to stay at like the Hilton when they could have stayed at an Airbnb for a third of the cost, you know? Maybe they have um, to submit like a budget justification that has to go through approval beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that's where it's like subject to yeah. within reason, like subject to approval. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're entitled. Like they have to present, like apply for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good distinction, definitely. Yeah, okay. So no other zone representative, blah, 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 except that the board, so instead of saying by resolution, um, we should say uh, through approval. Mm -hmm. Except the board of directors provides through approval. Oh, not spirit, no. Within reason. And then I'm going to say um, mm -hmm. I, examples because I do still want people to be able to say I would like to be paid for my labor. Um, mm -hmm. Include the reimbursement of actual travel and lodging expenses incurred in performance of the duties of. Barrier removal for technology or other materials necessary to perform the function of the position. Um, discounted or waived programming fees and waived membership fees. All compensation is subject to economic feasibility. So, and then oh, that's really helpful to have Chelsea. Chelsea shared a nonprofit website that usually is what people usually use for this kind of budgeting. So, that's something you can compare it to as well. Right, and it'll give um, you like the exact amount that like lodging typically costs in that city for a month and then you can break it down by week and that's literally what my job would pay us like that amount no more yeah i've had i've had compensation for um travel stipends that way as well where it's like this is what you're getting this is how um, much you get for mileage this is mm -hmm. how much we give you for for food for breakfast i love how breakfast lunch and dinner are all different amounts <laughs> yes well, and I, so I don't eat meat. So everything is super cheap for me compared to that scale. And so I would be like, are you sure? Because I feel weird and I'd still give them the receipts and they'd be like, it's fine. And it does not include alcohol. <laughs> yes. You can't drink. I mean, you can, but we won't pay you to. We'll pay you to um, drink. Unless, there is, unless you have the receipt, say you ordered pizza. Um, well, yeah. 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 Okay. So is this it for compensation? Do we all feel comfortable with this? Having team leaderships be the only role that does get compensation um, and they have the ability to decline it. No one else does at this moment um, with the exclusion of what is provided by the board of directors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so I think that's it, which is perfectly on time. <laughs> Four. This feels like a really good stopping point. <laughs> yes. Um, let me just double check and make sure that we didn't miss anything we talked about. Uh, so impeachment is going to be laid out in the special, um, or not the special election, but the election committee. Did we need to copy and paste the committee section as well so that they can do um, form committees essentially at this level with the officers? Or are we comfortable with officers only being able to create and rearrange teams? Can we go back and forth on that last time and decide um, committees would go in off, uh, would go in zone representatives, but then teams would not go in the board? I think so. I think that is what we decided. Um, because I think committees specifically have um, 
financial obligation. I think that's kind of how we denoted this, you know, um, from inception. That's the difference. Like teams might have some, but there'll be things that are like incurred over time. Like for YouTube, it'd be great if we could just get subtitling software <laughs> so that we're live captioning as we go, you know. Um, okay, so that's what we'll do. And then Kay says, when asking for travel lodging budget justification, we should ask that they use the standardized rate. Yes. I don't know if that needs to go in the bylaws, though. So. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't go in the bylaws, but for the reimbursement form, um, like you can link that at the top. It's something that I had to do in the past when I worked for the government. I'm going to have it open and um, bookmark it later to put in the ROTG okay. folder so we remember that. And it works um, really well with writing like grant proposals too. And you're thinking about like, I want to get a plane ticket. How do I justify this? You can say like the government literally says this is how much it costs. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that's it. Um, other than one question I have about, do we like the way this is structured? Is it structured logically? It starts with a definition of what an officer is, the election term, vacancies, and then responsibilities, which is a little bit different from this. This started with responsibilities slash general powers, but I think this kind of has to be called general powers. So I don't know. If y'all are down with this, I'm down with it as well. I mean, it makes sense to me if we're having like a just kind of a description, how they get voted, what happens if they're not there, what they need to do. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, cool. Then if we are all really comfortable, um, what I will say is we're going to throw it into a review over the weekend, just so we go through the main things we'll need to check is making sure we say zone representative instead of officer. Um, or instead of board member, because some of these are copy pasted. That we are gender neutral and that we are um, making sense. <laughs> um, and that things agree with themselves. So I think what we can do is just give ourselves, does it sound good to give ourselves until next Tuesday? Um, hold on, let me look at a, a thing real quick. Oh, Chelsea has a question as well. For zone representatives, do they need to live in their zone for the duration of their term? Let's check and see if we wrote that down. I don't remember if we did. Time zone membership will be determined through a process here and referred to as a census described in the election committee's duties. If a zone, there's two doubles, so I don't like that. If a zone has more than 10 members at the conclusion of their terms, so we did and didn't at the same time. <laughs> um, so I think what we'll have to do is describe what the census means. Yes, because I was thinking, oh, it would be great to be a zone representative, but I believe I will be moving out of the Eastern time zone. So I wouldn't, I then wouldn't apply, or then I would say I'm trying to move back to central time. Maybe I apply for central time. Um, and it's so funny because it's so simple, but it, it gets so complicated very quickly. I think probably what we'll talk about is that the census is, because we all are kind of in a field that does move around a lot. Yes. I think what we will say is that the census is determined at that point. And then you will continue to work for that area, even though you are outside of that area until that next two years comes up. And it's up to you if you want to be like, it feels weird to do this. I'll, you know, step down, then you can and we'll just hold a special election to replace you. That's true. And we are online, which does make it yeah. much more feasible. Exactly. And I think the main thing with zone membership is just like being familiar with the kind of arts environments on that in that area you know, and that familiarity doesn't just like get wiped from your brain when you move. It might feel a little weird, but I think that's the best thing we're gonna be able to do, you know? Yeah, for feedback before Tuesday from others. Yes, um, we should do that. Kay, would you be able to send out and so the two or three, I think it was like three or four people who couldn't make it. 
Mm -hmm. um, would you be able to send this out to them? Yeah. I can go ahead and send Ruben the recording of this and then they'll be able to see the link to the yeah. video as well. Yeah, and I was just thinking like of um, like if we wrote the four or five of them or whoever, how many it was, if we wrote them like, hey y'all, uh, we were really productive during this meeting and one of the areas where we had a snag and we like really want to make sure that we have like a well-rounded approach is for compensation if you'll have any ideas or feedback here's the section that we came up with please send it along uh, before Tuesday we would just love to have it otherwise it's going up for um, revision by membership by x date well should we do that though because that kind of prioritizes their voices over the voices of membership um, I, I was thinking that considering there's only like five of us at this meeting and there were several others that were invited. That's why I was thinking them. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that like when we put this out to the membership, we aren't, we don't have like a bunch of blind spots that maybe these folks could have caught earlier on. But okay. either, either way. Case, I think maybe we should send them the full draft. Okay. And like really encourage them because I think, I mean, that's essentially what happened with Ani is we... Yeah. You sent me an email and I said, here's the draft, it's ready, this is where you can find it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, the difference is that we had a meeting coming up so you could talk about it more at this meeting, which was helpful because you added some things that we missed. Um, so yeah, I guess just sending them a message about it overall. Yeah, I, I don't think it's prioritizing necessarily because then it'll go up still, like we'll still get input from the general membership, but I think because they specifically did want to attend, right? Like they were volunteering their time for this. Um, just making sure that we didn't leave out their perspective as well. Okay, and then I think, um, how should we ask them to communicate that? Should that be communicated through Discord or through the email? Um, it's just a matter of like, where, what is the one place we wanna keep all that information? My personal preference is Discord, but I also know that at least, I think two people, um, I think they have accounts, but I haven't seen them as active on Discord. So I'd hate to like send that out on Discord and then not have any kind of response because they're not active in that area. Do you wanna just share, like make sure it's shared with them through Google Drive and then they can make comments? Like they can actually literally add comments in this document that get reviewed? Yeah, that's a good idea. And then Kay and I, if you're down to do this, Kay, could um, review those comments, I guess, and kind yeah. of try to incorporate them. Yeah. If that feels comfortable to everybody. Okay. So, Kay, you said that you would send out those links asking for feedback. Um, overall before Tuesday yeah and that way we can all kind of work on it and say like oh there's some grammatical issue or um you use the word officer et cetera, et cetera. this needs to be capitalized that kind of stuff yeah I can send it out like right after this meeting if that's okay and ask for a response before Tuesday does that sound okay or is that too limited of a time frame I think it sounds okay. Um, I also think maybe send it to everybody, like us as well. That yeah. way we have the reminder on our calendar. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just kind of saying, you know, help us check capitalization, um, terminology, gender neutrality. And then, because I think it's good to say there are particular areas where we are concerned, like to say compensation, we really would like you to read over that. Okay. Um, I'd also really like input on the team um, leadership and what that entails, because I'm hoping we're not forgetting anything, but we might be forgetting something. So, and I know two of the people who can come are team leaders and then, um, just being in a team is a different experience for everybody anyway. And then the compensation, team leadership. 
Is there anything else? Like, I think there shouldn't be any reason to change waiver of notice or necessarily meetings, like not major changes. Um, maybe the responsibilities as well. Okay, so we can ask them for specific feedback on that section as well. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. Because I do know, oh wait, no, now I'm getting the meetings confused. I was gonna say, I do know Olivia was present for the first section of these, but then I'm like, no, I don't think she was. I think I'm getting it messed up, so. Anyway, they might also have like a more clear way to describe this, which would be great. Um, yeah, so, but I think those are the highlights of capitalization, terminology, gender neutrality, and then compensation, team leadership and stuff as well. Cause we also might have things that occur to us over the weekend. Um, and then Chelsea says some of the responsibility letters are uppercase and lowercase, so. Yeah, I don't know what's happening with that. I don't know if it's the formatting what's happening i'm gonna see i wonder if it's because it was copy pasted yeah sorry i can't like toggle screens over here aha uh -huh. it is because it was copy pasted a, thank you that's helpful Oops. and then the last um vote is going to be coming down on the 26th so we will um Keep promoting that through Instagram and in the newsletter as like a reminder, because I think that that is on Tuesday. So I'll try and like go ahead and type the newsletter on uh, Monday and then um, schedule it to go out in the morning on Tuesday just to be like, hey, you guys should really vote. Um, but the thing about that is I've started adding <clears throat> a link to the draft so they can see it formatted as well. It added an E? Yeah. Oh. It, if you look, it goes from A, B, C, D, and then yeah, E. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. I like okay. how it said infant. I was like, what? Infant? And then I <laughs> we are all babies. Um, <laughs> uh, so, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So all that little nitpicky stuff and then I think that's it. I think we are free. I'm sorry, I pulled a little bit longer than I needed to go, but I wanted to make sure we all knew our next step. Um, yeah, are there any questions, comments, or concerns? Anything that we haven't addressed? Nope. Okay, so the next section that we work on, do we want it to be teams or do we want it to be membership? Maybe team since it's kind of fresh and it will be more maybe it won't be fresh in our minds but I feel like we talked about teams a lot and it might be nice to corner sign kind of go from there to teams okay cool I agree it's also going to be a really big section yeah and it's going to be something that we're essentially fabricating <laughs> on our own. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah we don't have a template for that one well I was yeah. going to say also membership doesn't seem like I mean maybe when we get into it it doesn't seem like it'd have that big like they're not responsible for doing, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, I think it's mostly just going to be talking about membership benefits, yeah. dues, and we've talked a lot about all of those things already. So the big one with membership would be code of conduct. Conduct, yeah. I was like, that's the which is a yeah. whole separate document. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I will try to meet with you all in the next two weeks. Um, does it work better for me to send a doodle poll through email or through discord or how, what is the best way for me to kind of send that out? Should I send it to both? I, I prefer email, but I, I think it's good. <laughs> Emails, email, I think is the best bet. Well, cause then I can star it and be like, I haven't responded to this yet. <laughs> I've yeah, had to get buried in my email. Yeah. I have my anxious thing where it's like, if I haven't fully addressed it, I leave it as unread and then I get the unread anxiety. <laughs> uh, yeah, I okay, have to cool. like, flag it and I flag it red. So every time I open my inbox, I'm like, it's there. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, perfect. So I'll send it through email um, and then I'll just send like a reminder through Discord on the day of, because I think the way that I set it up this time, the email itself, the invitation sent a reminder today to everybody. So hopefully that will be the better way to do it. That way I'm not manually typing a bunch of reminders and then forgetting some days, you know? Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so and I will do, I'll do that. The one thing I'll do mm -hmm. next time, because this was the, I think this was the invitation that I may have made for the first time where it went out to everybody. Um, I just forgot to put in the uh, link to the Zoom call. Ah, so the yeah, yeah, yeah. Google Calendar invite didn't have that. So I had to go back and find it, but I'll do that for next time. Cool, thank you. Yay, I'm very proud of all of you and I love you. We can stop recording, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh.